Hello teachers. Do you know when you go to your class, how you interact with your students? In traditional methodology, many among you may be started asking questions to them. Few who are innovative amongst you may be using some alternative way either some storytelling or showing them some picture or asking them to ask questions. Learning is not a process which is linear. Everyone learns in his or her own way. And nowadays the emphasis is on providing the opportunities to the learners so that they can learn in their own way. They can construct their own meaning. And this is called constructivism. I am Dr. Gaurav Singh from School of Education, ICNO. And I am going to discuss with you constructivism as a learning approach. Our national curriculum framework in 2005 emphasized that there is a need to recognize the child as a natural learner and knowledge as an outcome of the child's own activity. So it clearly hinted that knowledge is not something which is being given by someone to another. Knowledge is being created by each and every individual. You can provide only information. How that information is being perceived or processed, it depends upon the individual, not on you. The same document also emphasized that in teaching learning, the emphasis is on such learning environment where children can construct their own knowledge, develop their capacities and remain an active learner. So our national curriculum framework basically asks you to provide a conducive learning environment or to provide an environment where learners can construct their own knowledge. Learners can share their experiences with each other. They can develop their capacities and they remain an active learner, not like in a classroom where a teacher is teaching something and a learner is receiving it or not receiving it, but remain passive most of the time. NCF 2005 do not recommend such passive classrooms. Rather, they believe that classroom should be active classroom and learner should be an active learner. This whole idea basically comes from a constructivism. But like other theories of learning, constructivism is not a single theory of learning. There is a difference between constructivism and other theories of learning. There are many contributors whose ideas have contributed in the growth of constructivism as in learning approach. It may be the idea of Divi, it may be the idea of Piaget, it may be the idea of Bogotsky, Novak, Brunner. There are number of contributors who have contributed, whose ideas have facilitated in developing this paradigm of learning to which we call constructivism. But one thing is sure, this constructivism is contrary to the traditional objectivist approach. Because constructivism believes that knowledge is a function of how an individual creates meaning from his or her own experiences. So the emphasis in constructivism is on giving experiences, sharing experiences, meaning making, social interaction and all these ideas have evolved bit time in constructivism due to the contribution of various constructivists. But if you try to draw out some basic characteristics of constructivism, constructivism believes that knowledge is an active meaning making process in which learner constructs their own meaning. Knowledge is not a passive receiving and giving the information by one to someone. It is not like the teacher is coming into the class with full of information and pouring it down in the minds of the 
children who were assumed by the traditionalist as blank slate or tabula rasa but constructivism believes that children's mind is not tabula rasa it is not blank it is full of ideas it is full of experiences those experiences may be complete may be incomplete may be right may be wrong but they are full of experiences you give them opportunity to use their experiences you give them opportunity in an active environment where they create their own meaning because constructivism believes that learners have their own ideas about a situation it may be complete it may be incomplete but they have their own ideas when they are allowed to use their ideas in meaning making it basically plays an important role in building the meaning and understanding the situation and one more thing on which constructivism emphasizes constructivism emphasizes that learners social and cultural background has its significant impact on their ideas when i'm talking about the social and cultural background i'm not talking only about the classroom social and cultural background but the cultural and social background of their families their neighborhood their religion their society the community from where they are coming because they earn experiences there and they try to use those experiences when we are giving them opportunity to construct their meaning so constructivism believes that learner constructs their knowledge through interaction when i'm talking about interaction interaction with peers interaction with the members of the society and not only the interaction with the people the interaction with the institution the interaction with the in structures the interaction with the environment so they construct their knowledge by interaction by perception whatever they perceive and whatever they experience so these are the basic characteristics of constructivism let us try to explore the ideas of different thinkers who basically contributed in the development of constructivism as a learning approach the very first one is john db you may say that during the john db's time there was no term like constructivism constructivism has not emerged as a philosophy or as a epistemology or as a learning theory at that time even the term was not there but if you see the ideas of db how db was perceiving about the learning and learning process db emphasized that learner should engage in the real world and not in pre planned environment so db was against the pre planned you know artificial classroom environment he was firm believer that if learners are engaged in the real world they learn properly and what constructivism is saying meaning making through experiences experiences where in the real world db also was a believer that learners should demonstrate their knowledge through creativity and collaboration with others learners should be provided the opportunity to think from themselves and to articulate their thought means the thought process of the learner should be developed they should be encouraged to challenge their own perception they should be encouraged to question their own thinking only then they can be a good learner and they will develop their understanding db has said that if you have doubts about how learning happens engage in sustained inquiry study ponder consider alternative possibilities and arrive at your belief grounded in evidences so what db was saying that whatever you will learn or your learner will learn or the learning will happen it will happen only through the constant engagement in sustained inquiries if they will challenge they will ponder they will see what are the alternative possibilities for a particular problem only then they will arrive on a particular solution 
which is based on the evidences which they will show. So it is basically the process of meaning making on their own. That's why when we talk about constructivism as a learning approach, we start with the ideas of Dewey because Dewey was one of the thinkers whose ideas were in line or in tune with the constructivist ideas. One among the biggest contributor in the theory of constructivism or in the learning approach of constructivism is Jean Piaget. Jean Piaget said that learning is a constructive process. It is not a delivery of goods from one place to another place. Rather, it is constructive. It keep on going. Construction keep on going. More experiences, more exposure, add more ideas and they construct their own meaning. Piaget has said that knowledge is not a copy of reality. To know an object, to know an event is not simply to look at it and make a mental copy or image of it. To know an object is to act on it. To know is to modify, to transform the object, to understand the process of this transformation and as a consequence to understand the way the object is constructed. So if you see this uh, very important saying of Piaget, what Piaget is trying to propose? Piaget has tried to propose that if you are seeing something and you are just making a copy of it or image of it, it is not learning. Learning means you deal with the object. You try to play with it. You use your experiences and try to transform it. You understand how the transformation is taking place. What is the process of it? So again, he is talking about the active engagement of learner in learning process through which knowledge is being constructed. Piaget's most important point was that he emphasized on an active learner who can observe, who can act, who can modify, who can manipulate, who can transform or who can construct their own meaning of an object or event. He proposed a very important concept called schema. He said that some mental structures or a schema develops on the basis of perception or experience. What is a schema? Actually in Piaget's view, whatever we see, we feel, we observe, we experience, we develop a mental structure for that in our mind that is called a schema. Then if something new is coming to us, either we try to compare it with the already existing schema with us. And he said that this learning takes place through a process which involves some basic tendencies. He proposed these tendencies as organization, adaptation and equilibrium. So he said that when something new is coming in front of a learner, either through observation, through experience, through interaction, whatever way something new is coming, he tried to organize it with already existing schema, already existing mental structures. If this mental structure matches with it, he adapt it. If not, then he or she try to modify it and try to create a situation of equilibrium in the mind. If equilibrium is established, meaning making takes place. If not, the learner again try to play with the schema, either develop a new schema or try to adapt it in a different way. But the learning continues till the new schema either fit with the earlier schema or established as a new schema in his or her mind. So this process is a continuous process according to Piaget. The another very important contributor in this theory is Vygotsky. Where Piaget focused on the individualistic learning process, Vygotsky's focus was more on social interaction or the context of learning where learning takes place. Vygotsky was of the view that learning is social in nature. Social in nature means the more a learner interact with the peers, 
with the society, with the community, with the nature, with the environment, with the family, with the peers, more he or she learn. So Piaget, in contrary to Piaget, Vygotsky was of the view that through interactions, children share their views and make their own meaning. So if you go by the Vygotsky's idea, what is a good classroom where learning takes place? In earlier days or in the traditional classroom, if a teacher is teaching in a classroom and all students are listening to him or her silently and a principal is going outside of the classroom, there is no noise and it is teaching going on one directional but the class is very disciplined quoted term, then it is a very good classroom. But according to Bugotsky, if there is not interaction, if it is only one way, if there is no question answer, if students are not interacting with each other, if children are not playing with the ideas, then there is no learning. That class may be a quoted, under quote, disciplined class, but no learning takes place in such class. So according to Vygotsky, interaction is the key for learning. Because Vygotsky was the believer that knowledge is distributed among people and in the environment which could be developed only by the cooperation or interaction with each other. Knowledge is distributed among different people. If different people will interact with each other, they will share their knowledge. If knowledge is distributed in the environment and learner will interact with the environment, the knowledge will be received, shared, observed and thus the meaning making will take place. So Vygotsky was the firm believer of social constructivism. That's why he said the teacher should provide an environment to the children where they can construct knowledge with the peers and the teachers by interacting. That's why he coined the term co-construction of knowledge. Knowledge is not constructed, knowledge is co-constructed where peers and teachers are equal contributor with the learner. He emphasized that the role of culture on learning which is very important in acquiring appropriate skills. He said the skill set with which a learner is coming to the class is not developed within the classroom. He is not talking about the classroom culture. He is talking about the culture from which the learner is coming. The basic skill set he or she means the learner develops within the cultural environment from where he or she is coming through interaction with the community members, through interaction with the family members, through interaction with different institutions of the community with whom a learner often interacts outside of the classroom. And Vygotsky proposed a very famous concept called zone of proximal development which ZPD which explained the role of interaction and learning we deal with it in a separate session. Another very important contributor to the development of the concept of constructivism is Jerome Pruner. Actually, the Bruner's concept and work was much influenced by Vygotsky's idea of social constructivism and he basically extended the Vygotsky's ideas and he proposed a very famous theory called scaffolding. Scaffolding means when a learner is being supported by a teacher up to the extent so that learner start interacting with the peers learner start interacting with the concept and the content and slowly slowly he or she himself or herself develops the capacity and teacher withdraw the support. So according to Bruner, children construct their own new ideas and concepts based on their existing knowledge. Bruner is also a big believer that whatever existing knowledge the children have whatever the ideas they have, whatever the concepts they already have are a firm base for new knowledge or new meaning making. He said that process of learning takes place through selection and transformation of information. When selection and transformation takes place, it leads to decision making, generating hypothesis, making meaning from the information and experiencing the things. And Bruner also believed that interest in a subject is best stimulus for learning. 
whatever a learner is learning his or her interest in that particular subject is one of the best stimulus for learning if he or she is not having the interest you can use different methods variety of media different type of teaching learning material but learning will not take place so the important of importance of interest was one of the key recommendations of bruner but if you see a relationship between vygotsky's ideas and bruner's ideas both believes that learning takes place through interactions interaction within the classroom interaction outside of the classroom and both believes that the concepts or ideas of the existing knowledge the existing knowledge plays a very important role in meaning making so that's why bruner's constructivism is often referred as the extended version of vygotsky's ideas of social constructivism one another very important contributor to this constructivism approach is novak and novak's constructivism is known as novak's humanistic constructivism he also proposes the construction of knowledge through meaningful learning authentic learning he used the term authentic learning he said that meaningful learning underlies the constructive integration of thinking feeling and acting leading to empowerment of commitment and responsibility he said that in acquisition of new knowledge emotions play a very important role role of emotions in learning bring some humanistic touch to the constructivism ideas and that's why his constructivist ideas are often referred as humanistic constructivism and novak's very unique contribution to the whole idea of constructivism is concept map concept maps are basically the tools which help in developing meaningful construction of new knowledge by examining the existing relationship and deriving at new relationship if you develop a concept map what you do basically you try to identify the concepts and sub concepts or whatever ideas or if we uh, take the term of piaze whatever schemas you have you put them at different places then you draw lines to identify the relationship or the how each concept or each sub concept or each schema is related to each other right then if there is a possibility of a different kind of relationship then a learner try to derive a new relationship so novak's concept map was a very good tool which we are using nowadays in different types of planning specifically when we are talking about the constructivist planning we are not developing lesson plans nowadays but we are using concept map to create a whole conceptual understanding of the concepts which we are uh, which we are basically try to develop among the learners this also helps in creating a authentic learning environment where learning can takes place so if you go all these ideas either dv's ideas or novak or bruner or vygotsky or piaget you can identify that each one has contributed in the development of constructivism like if i will take dv's ideas what dv said that learning takes place in real world and not in a pre planned environment so the emphasis of realistic learning environment is a key contribution of dv then what piaget said that learning is a constructive process it is a continuous process and vygotsky added to it that knowledge is mutually built and co constructed so co construction of knowledge by interaction and how it takes place bruner added that learners actively construct the meaning of structures and identify the principles on their own and how novak contributed that he said learners organize the scattered view at one place and establish relationship between these views so if you see from development from uh, 
dv till nobok constructivism has evolved as a learning approach constructivists try to explain how learning takes place in the real world among the learners they propose the importance of interaction and they oppose that learning is not something in which a knowledge is being given by someone more knowledgeable to less knowledgeable it is not knowledge it is only the transfer of information knowledge is something else which each individual each learner creates on herself or himself and it takes place in realistic environment through mutual interaction through active participation and organizing the scattered view at one place and to identify the relationships and to develop new relationships so this is the way how constructivism has evolved as an learning approach i hope that this discussion will help you in developing your understanding of how constructivism is a learning approach thank you very much thanks a lot